I'm standing in the end of a gable roof house built in the 1980s, a typical kind of gable end construction or roof framing construction. What we're going to look at today is how you can retrofit or strengthen the gable end to reduce the chances that the wall will be pulled out or pushed in uh, and creating collapse and damage in a hurricane. We're going to be looking at several different things. There are three issues that we really worry about with gable ends. One is the anchorage at the bottom of the gable end between the bottom of the wall and the ceiling diaphragm that we've got here. The wood that I'm standing on with my left foot here is actually a nailing board on the top of the wall that allows people to connect the sheetrock to the ceiling and nail it all together. So we're worried about it coming apart down there at the bottom. We're worried about how strong these studs are. As you can see in this case, the studs that are forming and bracing the sheathing on the outside of this house are sitting flat against the wall. That is their weakest direction. And unfortunately, many times, people have put together the walls like this with very little structural strength, so there's a very good chance that this wall could be bent in or out under the forces of a hurricane. And then when we come up to the top, we've got a very weak connection between the top of the studs and the top of the truss here, so that the forces of the wind pushing or pulling on this wall could easily break this connection. So we're going to be looking at how do we tie all these pieces together, strengthen these members, anchor the top, anchor the bottom, and really reinforce the end of this gable end. What I'm looking at right here is some bracing that we found in this attic when we came up in here. And this bracing clearly was put in when the wall was being stood up initially for construction purposes. There's a single nail up here in this corner, single nail in the bottom corner. This was very much temporary bracing. So this should not be in any way confused with somebody's attempt to do a gable end brace to resist hurricane forces. This was strictly put in just to help hold the wall in place while they were building the house. Uh, there are nails along the bottom board here. One of the things that we'd point out is that when you get near the end of one of these boards and you put a couple nails in, there's not much strength from that because it's so, in, so close to the end of the wood. So the bracing system we're going to show you today, we've tried to take care of all the kind of weaknesses that come from typical construction to really brace the end and keep the home from opening up and having water pouring through your house. One thing you may want to consider if you're working up in the attic is making something like this where you take a uh, bucket that would hold your fasteners and the tools that you need and put it on a piece of board, attach it so that you can span across the roofing, roof framing members. And uh, it, we're looking at the installation of the bottom brace that goes across the ceiling joist or the bottom cord of the trusses and it will provide the bracing to attach the bottom of the gable wall into the ceiling to hold that bottom end in. Positioning the member in place, it'll be screwed into the uh, bottom cord and, and we prefer to use screws there because you're when you're, if you're driving nails into that, you could be knocking the uh, sheetrock loose from the driving the nails in there. So screws are a much safer way to make this attachment. We're installing three screws at each connection. That's what the engineering has, has given us is the, the best way to make this connection. And we try to do a little bit of a stagger between the fasteners so that they're not all lined up. Note that we've made this brace longer it stick, so it sticks out beyond the last uh, truss bottom cord. We want at least about three inches of this brace to stick out beyond the last truss so that when we put the screws in, we're not going to crack the wood. We like to install all of the floor braces first because it gives you a much better platform for walking and, and working here. We have worked out in some of the detailed guidance that if you end up with something that blocks one of these braces and you can't bring it out a full three members, that you can work around that. And so if you encounter a place where you've got a duct coming up that's blocking, putting this horizontal brace in place, the, the guidance that we've put together for the code direction as well as a longer guide will give you ideas for how you can work around obstacles. Any place that we've got a 
wall stud that's longer than about three feet, then we will put in the braces and stiffen up those members. Sometimes you'll have to move wires out of the way or fish the, uh, get the braces underneath wires or over top wires. What you don't want to do is to pinch the wires, but you can certainly fish them underneath or above. There are a lot of cables typically running around up in your attic, some of them for cable TV, others for electrical connections, and uh, it's important that you not pinch any of these cables. Now we're uh, installing the brace at the top that's on the top along the top cord of the trusses and Richard is marking the locations where the uh, trusses are so that he can bring it the brace down and put the screws in and get them started and then he'll lift it up and it'll make it a lot easier to for one person to put it in place. To make sure that you put this brace on the same side of the wall stud as the bottom plate now that we've cut the retrofit studs that we're going to add, Richard is attaching straps to them that will tie the retrofit stud into the horizontal braces at the ceiling and at the floor. And the requirement is that for this particular wind speed and length of stud and all, uh, or for this particular size stud, retrofit stud, that there have to be at least six fasteners put in to the strap, we're going to add in six fasteners here, and that the fastener closest to the end of the stud has to be at least two and a half inches away from the end of the stud so we won't split the wood. And then we're going to bend the strap around the end of the retrofit stud. And install a strap the same way going in the same direction, bending it in the same direction on the other end of the retrofit stud. We're installing the retrofit stud in position. Richard is overlapping it with the existing stud and you can see that there's a metal strap sticking out at the bottom along the horizontal brace at the bottom and a metal strap at the top that we will align with the brace at the top and fasten that end to each of the braces with at least six screws for this particular installation. There is a chart in the code that gives you the number of fasteners you need for each type of installation that we do, which depends on the wind speed zone and the length of the uh, studs and the retrofit stud as to how many fasteners you need to put in. Right. Notice that the strap doesn't have to be in the middle of the brace, but we do try to have at least a half inch between the outer uh, fastener and the edge of the brace. So as long as you respect that half inch clearance so that you're not getting too close to the edge of the brace, you're fine. Now we're going to stitch the retrofit stud to the existing stud using a series of screws roughly about six inches on center. The strap is used to re restrain the retrofit stud and with it the existing stud from being pulled out by the wind force. When it comes to pushing in because we've got a thin metal strap here there's not a lot of resistance so we're going to put a block in against the stud to hold it and keep it from being pushed in by the force of the wind and then there are a certain number of screws that we need to put into this block in order to hold it in place and that's given in the tables for this particular application we need to put in six three inch long screws to attach the compression block to the brace and we'll do this both at the bottom and at the top we can put the compression block over top of the metal strap but we're really putting it in here is to block to push against to be there to brace the retrofit stud and keep it from pushing in and we just have to make sure that our screws don't go down and hit that metal strap.